Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and I've always been on the lookout for inexpensive security cameras that have some apps and cloud-based functionality with no monthly fee. Uh, this one seems to check all of the boxes of something that I've been looking for. It's not perfect, but it is actually pretty reasonably priced and there's no add-on cost to owning it. This is the Wise Camera version 2. It costs $20, that's it. It connects up with your Wi-Fi network, but it can also record locally onto an SD card that you install in the bottom of the device. And it looks like it's been working pretty nicely for me so far, and we're going to be exploring this a little bit in this review. I do want to let you know, though, in the interest of full disclosure, that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one has looked at this video before it was uploaded. So let's get into it and see what this little camera is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. As I mentioned, this camera costs 20 bucks, and there's an additional $6 added onto that for shipping, so $26 all in. Uh, this is an indoor camera only, uh, so you do need to make sure it doesn't get wet. If you put it outside and it gets wet, it probably won't work for long, so uh, just be advised of that. You can maybe point it out a window or something like that. It is powered off of a standard USB uh, charging adapter here, so it uses uh, 5 volts at 1 amp, so presumably you could attach it up to one of those backup batteries, and they estimate some of the larger batteries might keep it going for a day or more. Uh, so it doesn't draw all that much power, but again, not well suited for an outdoor environment. You do have a good amount of adjustability on the camera here, so you can see what you can do for adjustments. You can point it uh, down here. Just note that it might tip over if you go a little too far in that direction, so uh, get it into the position you want and you're good to go, so that's a good thing. Uh, it's also got a magnet here at the bottom, so it will stick to metal surfaces without having to use any tools. And they also give you this little uh, metal circle thing that you can stick on uh, walls and doors and whatnot to attach the camera. So they did that because they presume people don't want to screw things into their uh, walls or doors. And you can use that little metal ring and some adhesive to stick it on there without having to use tools. And presumably you could take that ring off and then uh, move the camera around to other portions in your home. It connects up to your network via Wi-Fi. It's accessible through its app and its app only. Uh, that's on iOS and Android. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Uh, there's no monthly fee with it, though. They'll store about uh, two weeks of notification events inside of the uh, Amazon cloud system for you. And then uh, after that, it deletes those uh, recordings. But there is an SD card slot here at the bottom. And you can set this thing to continuously record. And I'll show you some video samples in a little bit. Uh, so you can have it record notification and motion events, but also record everything that it sees. And it takes about uh, 10 gigabytes per day to store a full 24 hours worth of video. It shoots 1080p at only 10 frames per second. So you're not going to get a lot of smooth motion here, but it is good enough to make out faces and that kind of thing. But before we get into the app, let's take a look at uh, some of the image samples that I took with it earlier. So I've got some outdoor uh, stuff here. You can see what it looks like there. Not bad. It's again, you know, low frame rate, highly compressed, but it is uh, visible and you can make out uh, different motion events that occur. You're going to see some of these green boxes around the motion that's taking place because it does overlay these boxes to give you an idea as to where you should look for motion that it detected. Uh, you'll see in the app you have the ability to determine how much motion sets off a notification, and I found it's been pretty good at preventing false alarms. Even for a camera that's not designed to be outside, it was ignoring some of the trees moving uh, that you see in that video there and didn't push a notification to me because I had set the, uh, the, the motion amount to medium in the setting for that. It also does very well in low light, even when you're not using its night vision feature. Uh, so here I was in a dark room just illuminated by my smartphone, and you can see it actually looks pretty decent for a cheap camera. Uh, so you might be able to maybe have it look out a window, provided you have a porch light on to illuminate the area outside the door. Uh, that's one option. Uh, the night vision also works very well on it too, so that was a good thing. But I wasn't impressed with its audio capabilities. Have a listen. I am testing audio testing audio on the little camera here. So you can see it doesn't sound all that great. You could certainly have a conversation with somebody, but uh, it's not the best audio that you'll find on a home security camera. But again, it's only 20 bucks. Let's take a look now at its app and how all of this stuff works. Uh, right now, I only have one camera in my repertoire, but on this device screen, you'll see them all listed here. Uh, of note is that 
you do need to log into the WISE servers in order to use the camera, even if you are just intending to use its local storage capabilities. So it is uh, tied to their servers, uh, even though there's no monthly fee, it is connecting to them. It is secured only by a username and password. There doesn't appear to be any two-factor authentication option available at the time that I'm recording this video. Uh, they do say, though, that the notifications that it will deliver to you through that notification tab I just checked on uh, is stored in uh, the Amazon Cloud, which a lot of uh, these kind of startup companies do tend to use. Uh, but they don't really give a lot of detail on the encryption that they're using. They say that it is end-to-end -end encrypted, uh, which would lead me to believe that uh, there's some encryption being made on the device before it transmits the data to the Amazon cloud. However, I don't know where those security certificates are stored. So presumably, if a government agency uh, wanted to get access to the device here, uh, they could probably do so through a subpoena. But it's probably uh, relatively secure from people that might be trying to snoop on your network. But again, you're only being secured here by a username and password. So just uh, keep all that in mind. Even the stuff that is stored on the SD card is accessible through your WISE account, uh, which again is required to use the camera. Uh, that out of the way, let's take a look at some of these motion alerts that it picked up here. So here's one from uh, 2.39 p.m. and you can see me testing out some of the functions of the camera a little bit earlier. When you get an alert, it will record about 15 seconds of video. It'll toss that video up to the cloud that I just talked about and then it'll let you look at those things. I have the option here at the bottom to uh, hit share here, which will allow me to either download it to my camera roll here if I click on save video that you see there uh, at the bottom here, right there. Uh, or of course, you can do uh, any number of functions that you would normally be able to do with your smartphone insofar as transferring video files around. So I can email it or use AirDrop here on the iPhone. Uh, whatever you can do in Android, you'll also be able to do through the app here too. So it has a lot of that uh, functionality for sharing things that you might be familiar with. Uh, you have the ability to go back in time here to see different dates that uh, it might have recorded motion events on. So you have some of that capability there. And then if you want to go and look at a particular camera, you can click on the camera here and dive into it. Uh, so here we've got uh, now the connection to the camera. And this can work over the internet as well. So you're not restricted to just using it inside your house, of course. And you'll notice here a bunch of little buttons here at the bottom. So what I can do right here is click on record. And what this will do right now is record the live stream from the camera onto my phone. Uh, so right now the camera is recording to its SD card in that continuous function I mentioned earlier, but it's now passing video uh, down to my phone as well. You can see what one of those motion alerts looks like too. Uh, so that's a cool thing that you can do. Uh, likewise, you can also take a photo if you want, just a quick still uh, photo that it will take and uh, store it to the album. Uh, this is going into my photo roll here on the iPhone. I would imagine on Android it would also toss it to your photo gallery. And then it organizes all of the media that uh, the app takes into this album option here. So I can get all the videos and all the photos that it took as well. So it'll at least isolate uh, what it took from my other photos. But again, if you jump back to your camera roll or photo gallery, uh, you'll have that on there. Uh, this function here called voice allows you to have uh, that two-way communication I talked about. Uh, so you can always hear what's coming out of the camera on your device. But if you want to talk back, uh, what you have to do is hold down this voice button here. Hello, camera, I'm talking to you. So you can see there's kind of a delay to that uh, when you are communicating back and forth. It's kind of like a CB function, uh, only for you though, the one that's communicating through the app. Uh, audio from this thing is always coming back to you. I was also finding it was echoing myself back to me even when I was not in the same room as the camera as I am now. So not the perfect uh, two-way communication mechanism, but if you got somebody breaking into your house, I think this would sufficiently scare them. The audio sounds pretty, pretty lousy out of it, but it's enough, I think, to jolt somebody. Uh, there's no way to adjust the volume on the speaker here either, so it's pretty loud, and I think it will certainly get the thieves out of your house because it's going to startle them without a doubt. Uh, over here on playback is another neat feature. So uh, what I've been doing here is recording continuously, and I have the ability here to uh, jump back in my timeline here and see recordings that I took earlier in the day. Uh, so that's kind of a neat thing. So 
All these green areas are portions where I had done a uh, prior recording with the device, and I've got access to all of this. I can also pop the card out and just look at these files individually. Uh, by default, it stores everything uh, in a folder by date, and then it breaks it down by the hour, and then it records in uh, these little one-minute incremental files. So you can jump into any minute of any hour of any day. It's pretty well organized on the card, which I thought was nice. And then uh, it's very easy, of course, just to copy those files off the SD card. Now, the camera manages storage on the SD card very similar to how a dashboard camera works in that as the card fills up, it deletes the oldest footage. And if you want to save something, you got to jump into that app and grab it before it deletes it. The largest card you can put inside of the camera is 32 gigabytes, which means you're going to get about two or three days worth of uh, back storage on it on each card before it starts erasing footage. So you'll need to get in there uh, you know, within a day or two to get your uh, recording out before it goes away. Uh, those notifications, of course, are stored in the cloud and are stored there for two weeks. Now, you do have the option to not have it record continuously and have it only record the uh, notification events. So that's one way to get a little bit more life out of the card. Uh, one of the neat things about this, though, is that as you are reviewing your footage here on the playback mode, I can go over to something where we've got a little bit more motion. Uh, I can actually hit the uh, record option here on, on this playback screen, just like we could do on the live screen. And when I do that, what it's going to do is actually record the playback for me, and it will store it in that gallery just like it did before. So you do have some ability to kind of find some of the stuff you want to maintain on your phone, uh, which I'm doing right here, and I'll get a, a video stored here of the things that I just scrubbed through. So you have some, uh, some option to grab this stuff remotely, but uh, probably the most efficient way is to pop the card out of the camera and drop it into your computer. But my only criticism of this live playback feature, at least at the moment, uh, is that you don't get any idea as to where the notifications took place on this timeline. So as we're going through this thing, you'll see that uh, the green area on the timeline indicates that it has recorded something, uh, but we don't see where any notification events occurred. And I would have liked to have been able to jump to those events and then be able to very quickly look uh, to the left or right of them, for example, to see perhaps something that I might want to get a little more context on. Uh, but what you can do, though, is jump into the notification screen, find out the time that that motion event occurred, and then go back over to the camera's playback and uh, go through that uh, scrubbing mechanism there to figure out what happened maybe before or after that motion event took place. Now, I did want to go over the notification options here on the camera, so I'm going to click the gear icon in the upper right-hand corner and go over to alert settings. And uh, right now, I've got motion detection on this camera set to on. Uh, sensitivity is at medium. And what this will do is anytime it detects anything, it'll push a notification to my phone. Uh, there's no way to arm and disarm a whole group of cameras at the same time. So you have to go into each of them and turn these features on or off. Uh, one thing they did add, though, was an alert schedule. This is, again, set on a, cur a per camera basis. So it can record motion events but not alert me outside of the alert schedule window that I have here. So for example, right now it's going from 1 p.m. to 12 a.m. Anytime it gets a motion event in that window of time, it'll push a notification out to me. Anything outside of that time, it will record to the cloud, but won't push a notification to my phone. So you have some ability not to be disturbed, but you've got to do this on a per camera basis. And again, there's no way to do like a mass arm disarm. It doesn't work with Amazon's talking lady or with uh, some of the IFTTT things that are out there. So right now it's kind of limited as to how you uh, manage these alerts, but it can detect on a lot of stuff. So in addition to motion detection, which I found to work pretty well actually for a $25 camera, it's not doing a lot of false alarms here. It also has sound detection, and you're also going to see on here smoke detection and carbon monoxide detection. Uh, this doesn't actually have sensors in it to detect those things, but it is, uh, through its software, uh, geared to listen to what your carbon monoxide or smoke alarm might sound like, 
and if it hears a smoke alarm, it will let you know. So for example, you could turn off sound detection, but leave those other two options on. And if your smoke detector goes off, it'll tell you that your smoke detector is going off. So that's an option to pursue. That does work actually. So it was pretty neat to see that uh, built in on this one. And we'll turn the sound detection off to keep those notifications from getting pushed out to me. So it's got a lot of things that it can detect. But again, I would like to have a little more flexibility as to how those notifications to my phone are managed. And one other feature of the camera that I thought was kind of neat is its time lapse feature. If we tap on that real quick, uh, what you can do is set a start and an end point and then an interval. And in this instance, for example, it will take a picture every three seconds from 4.43 p.m. until 7.43 p.m. And it will uh, drop that off on the SD card and then I can pull that out and then play it back later. You can see an example of something I uh, shot off the back deck here a little earlier today. So all in, I am really impressed with what they've put together here for a very low entry cost. Uh, this is their second generation camera that they've put out and I'm really pleased with the robustness of the app and the feature set, especially since they're not asking for a monthly fee beyond the $26 you're paying to get the camera delivered to your door. Uh, this is in sharp contrast, of course, to cameras from Canary and Ring that we looked at that have a couple hundred dollar entry point and then if you don't pay them the monthly fee, they take away all the features that you initially paid for. Uh, that's not happening here, but uh, this company needs to stay in business for the camera to continue working. And I am guessing they're running on a very, very tight margin here in order to uh, get to this price point. And if they don't keep selling cameras, they're not going to be able to keep the lights on to keep that server running for your camera to log into. So uh, there is some risk involved with this, but certainly less so than you might have with other brands, especially given that you're going to be uh, accruing all these additional costs just to keep the camera operating and maintaining its feature set. Now, one way they might be keeping costs down on this is that they're using somebody else's camera. In fact, there are two other products on the market that look identical to this, uh, but of course are different systems. Uh, one is called the Spot, and the other one is called the Xiaotang. Uh, they are not compatible with each other, but they are using the exact same build, uh, which is why this camera might look familiar to you. But the logic inside of this one is different. So uh, it looks like maybe they spent their effort on software, and then because they didn't have to worry about the hardware, they had a lower cost of development and therefore maybe more runway to work with here. But again, I think this is a very uh, difficult business to be in, but perhaps being at that low price will uh, move a lot of volume for them. So time will tell uh, as this goes on. But if you are looking for something uh, dirt cheap that's functional and better than expected with no monthly fee, uh, I don't think you're going to get much uh, cheaper than this one. And again, I really have no problem recommending this given uh, what we've looked at here in the review. Let me know what you think of it down below in the comment stream. We can always do a follow up if you want to see some more detail on something. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.